The candidates need no introduction. The Republican candidate, Vice President Richard M. Nixon, and the Democratic candidate, Senator John F. Kennedy. From Kennedy against Nixon to Hillary against Trump, presidential debate has an unusual, sometimes even decisive moment. In American politics, it leaves an indelible mark. Almost always, every debate cycle I can remember, something happened in one of those debates. That despite the candidate showed the American people something that they needed to know about the candidate. Walter Mondale, in the fight against Nixon and trying to win re-election, faced two times such a turbulent moment. Reagan wasn't really following his script very well, and he'd get into these、uh, speeches, and he'd get lost in the middle of it. He'd forget where he's going. The two-thirds of the defense budget pays for pay and salary, or pay and pension, and then you add to that food and wardrobe and all the other things, and you only have a small portion going for weapons. We don't get too many opportunities to see the candidates unfiltered and、uh, side by side and on live television without the mediation of journalists or without the handlers right there affecting how and what they say. 艾伦·施罗德是东北大学的新闻学教授，他写了一本书，描述电视在总统辩论中的作用，从1960年肯尼迪和尼克松之间的第一场辩论开始。Nixon, having just been released a few weeks earlier from the hospital, had lost a lot of weight, was very pallid, didn't really put on the makeup that he should have had put on, and was、uh, was sweating and was underweight and just didn't look well on camera. As we know, Nixon refused to, to have any makeup, and so he looked like he had a shadow. For those who listened on the radio, they thought Nixon won. For those who watched TV, they thought,、uh, you know, Kennedy won. 弗兰克·塞斯诺是乔治华盛顿大学战略计划主任，曾任美国有线电视新闻网的白宫事务记者。You know, there was the famous moment way back when, when Gerald Ford was running, where he tried to suggest that Poland was not part of the Soviet empire. There's no Soviet domination. Of Eastern Europe, and there never will be under a Ford administration. Uh, uh, If you go back and look, the moderator、uh, is is almost sort of speechless. <laughs> 马利凯特卡里教授政治学，是弗吉尼亚大学米勒中心的高级研究员。他是老布什总统当年的辩论撰稿人。布什一九九二年与罗斯佩罗和比尔克林顿进行了辩论。One of the two of them. Had violated the rules, was going way over their time, and Carol Simpson was not enforcing the rules. George Bush does one of these, you know, basically starts pointing at his watch、uh, as a signal to her to please, please enforce the rules. And the audience doesn't know the rules, and the audience thinks he's looking at his watch because he's got something better to do and he wants to go get a hamburger or something. And it totally backfired on George Bush. In this instance, George Bush didn't want to be there. He didn't think he needed to prove himself to、uh, to the voters in that way. And it's interesting. Years later, when he was interviewed by Jim Lehrer about that moment, that's what he said: "I didn't want to be there." 一九八四年，在与蒙代尔的第一次辩论中，不论罗纳德·里根的表现使人们产生了些什么疑问，但是他对自己年纪是否太大的疑虑应对得当，巧妙胜出。And I want you to know that also, I will not. Well, you know, I, I was laughing about it because I thought it was a joke,、um, and、um, at the same hand, I, was, I think he landed a blow that was pretty effective and.、Uh, Between my laughter, there were a few tears coming down there. 最终，蒙代尔以很大的差距输给了里根。美国之音，雷迪什，华盛顿报道。No, I'm not sure that was. You know, we were so far behind that.、Uh...